Thank you, Rudy. Uh, good morning. So um, what we're going to show uh, in this demo is basically the automation of the instantiation of a couple of services. One is the uh, enhanced mobile broadband service uh, in uh, the remote data center, uh, DC1 here on the left. And we're going to show also uh, a distributed edge computing um, uh, or a service in a distributed edge computing uh, data center, DC2, for the ultra-reliable and low-latency com uh, communication service. Now, one thing um, to do this, basically, we have three phases in this automation or in this process. The first phase is the discovery phase, by which, basically, the service definition, the overlay service definition, is being input into the segment routing interconnect controller, which is an application of the NSP. So that information is provided via either an orchestrator or via a portal, via a northbound interface. The next step is the SRIC needs to basically uh, discover the service topology. We need to know basically the data center ID, which data center uh, gateways exist, and also which SI router is involved in this connectivity. And then finally, we need to discover the one topology um, because, uh, I mean, to provide this seamless automation, we need to basically have the details of the one topology because that's pretty much where all the, most of the SLA constraints need to be applied. So let's uh, look into this on the, um, on the PCE user interface. You will see that network has been discovered uh, on the wide area network. Each IGP domain is as its own color. The data center, the remote data center, is shown there, DC1, uh, with a couple of DC gateways and uh, two, uh, basically, uh, virtual leaf, the VRSs, on, on hypervisors. And the, uh, the local distributed edge computing data center has just one, um, one VRS. Now, you see that there are dotted lines on the data center topology. That's because the SRIC does need to know the details of the underlay because, as Rudy said, we can, use, we can tunnel over this underlay using, basically, MPNS over UDP. Um, the, also, we, will, we have discovered through that Northbound interface a couple of slices or slice templates. One of them is for EMBB. That basically has a color 1000 that basically summarizes the, uh, the constraints. One of them is actually the cost uh, or the IGP cost. And the URLC one has color 1001, uh, sorry, color, yeah, 1001, and also uh, has latency as the objective. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next phase, which is the, um, which is the initialization phase. Now, what we're going to do here is that we are going to tie that information we got from the northbound interface by creating uh, a couple of segment routing TE policies, uh, templates, in fact, to basically combine the service information with the transport information so we can actually push this into the network. And then the next step is basically to create those on the network. Um, so let's look into this. Now, we use the service fulfillment application on the NSP, and what we do is we configure a service name, then we make a reference to the slice uh, template that we've uh, received via the northbound interface. Then we go next and select the endpoints of the service. One of them, of course, is a port on the uh, set site router. And the other one is basically the uh, data center one, um, the enterprise, the user there, the tenant on that thing. We don't have a hypervisor yet or a VRS yet so selected. Then we deploy the service. And then once this is done, you can see on the logs on the SRIC, on the left side, there is a bunch of events that create that pushes that into the network. You log in into the uh, VSD, which is the controller on the data center one, and you will see that there is an instance of a layer three domain for EAMBB that has been created. There is no yet a virtual machine. On the cell site router, we automated the creation of an EVPN service that has both a layer two and a layer three component to it and it's ready basically to be used. There's no yet connectivity to the RAN side or to the network yet, but it's ready. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, the automation phase. This is where all the magic happens in terms of the, uh, basically the automation part of it. So we spawn a VM in, a, in, let's say, the remote data center, then we onboard the VNF, and that basically creates a bunch of activity on the data center. Uh, we get an advertisement on a VPN route, as Rudy was saying, because this is driven from the, 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 you know, the workload side of it. And that VPN route is discovered by the SRIC, which will then do a path computation across the multiple domains, and then instantiate basically the SR tunnels and connect 
the VLAN interfaces on the, um, on the RAN site to complete the connectivity. So let's go look into this into more detail. So the VM gets created uh, and the VNF is onboarded. This triggers basically the creation of a virtual machine port that has all the um, addresses that inherited from the template and then the caller. We go to the service fulfillment interface. We see the two endpoints, the uh, data center one there, the VRS address, this is the VNF address there. The caller, which is 1000 for the EMBB service. And there's a route target there, uh, which, is, uh, which is used. On the PCE user interface, you will see the paths for both directions have been created from the set site router all the way to the, uh, to the um, data center one. And actually it's a recursive path because is a, there is a compressed path in the middle there over the, uh, of the, the WAN. And an MPS over UDP component there uh, between the data center gateway and the local uh, VRS. Now let's have a closer look to what happened behind the scene here. Uh, so the first thing that triggered the whole thing is, was the eVPN route that was advertised by the uh, data center controller. So you see here, this is basically the prefix of that VNF, uh, the next hop, the route target, and the caller 1000. So this is really the information we use. The route target uh, ties back into basically the service instance that the, uh, we created, and the caller pushes uh, or points to the SRT policy that we need to do. And this is the SRT policy. You see source destination, caller 1000. There are two of them, actually, one is end-to-end -end from the set site router to the remote VRS, and then one for the path over the one which has been uh, basically uh, compressed using a binding set. So we go also onto the set site router, and we check uh, that there was actually a policy that was pushed, um, and it shows here. This is the SR policy, the end-to-end -end one. Owner is BGP, caller is 1000, and we see the segment list, which represents the path over, over the network. Now we'll go do the same thing in the distributed edge cloud data center and we're going to onboard basically another virtual machine and the VNF for the URLC service. And exactly the same process again, there is an eVPN route that basically triggers the whole process here and the service shows up on the, uh, on the um, uh, UI of the uh, service fulfillment uh, application. And again, we look into the eVPN routes into the, the logs here in the SRIC you see there is an eVPN route here, uh, very similar to the uh, EMBB service, except that obviously the addresses are different and the caller is 1000, which is the URLC service. Then the SRT policies that have been created the same way um, to the actually the local data center. In this case, you will see now on the PCE user interface, there is more tunnels because now we have basically the two directions to the, to the edge uh, data center um, uh, DC2. So that's basically uh, shows also on the set site router, there's a second policy which is created for the URC service with, pol uh, with caller 1001. So basically what happened here is we, we've automated the whole process from the onboarding of the VNF to basically the uh, creation of the entire service, the path computation, this is all automated for you. The service is, is instantiated automatically, the import policies, export policy, the coring of the routes, everything is actually all automated uh, basically across all these domains. And that's really the power of this uh, solution NFIX. Back to you, Rudy.